Good evening, everyone. I'm uh, Ramiro Salazar, director of the San Antonio Public Library. Uh, it's uh, my pleasure to extend to all of you a very warm welcome on behalf of the, all the staff of the San Antonio Public Library and the Library Board of Trustees. We're very happy to be hosting this event here and in our auditorium. Uh, I'm looking forward to a, a very what a wonderful program. I wanted to indicate that this event is, has been, a, from my perspective, I'm going to describe it the way I, when it was described to me. So I'll characterize it as a labor of love. There's a lot of collaboration um, through library friends and advocates uh, of the library and of literature. I would like to recognize Sheila Black and the staff from Gemini Inc. Inc. for their participation in tonight's event. Sheila, I know you're one of the you're one of the principal architects of uh, the event this evening, and thank you so much for for your assistance. And Sheila will be coming up shortly after I complete my introduction introductory remarks. Um, I would also like to recognize uh, Nowcast and Charlotte Ann Lucas, who is uh, not only videotaping to the, and streaming to tonight's event, and it will be made available in their archives for those folks that were not able to make it. They will be able to experience this program later on by accessing the archives of Nowcast. But Charlotte Ann, thank you so much for being our partner, and thank you so much for supporting programs such as these that are important to the community. I would also like to thank the uh, San Antonio Public Library Foundation and the Friends of the San Antonio Public Library. Those are two key stakeholder groups, support groups for the San Antonio Public Library. Uh, they help us bring programs such as programs like these to the community. Uh, so we are extremely grateful to the Library Foundation and the Friends of the San Antonio Public Library for allowing us and supporting uh, with funds to bring these programs to the community. Lastly, I would like to thank our state poet, poet laureate, Dr. Carmen Tafoya. Uh, I understand, Carmen, that you're the other architect of this program and uh, that you and Sheila worked very hard to uh, envision, it, envision it and then bringing it together. So thank you so much for that and for your participation later on in the program. I'd like to recognize a couple of folks here in the audience. I'll start with the uh, chair of the Library Board of Trustees, Paul Stahl. Thank you, Paul, for being here. Right. I also want to recognize Bryce Milligan uh, for a couple of reasons. One, we have an exhibit of Wings Press uh, in our gallery. Uh, Wings Press is celebrating 40 years and uh, we're helping by providing the venue for their uh, celebration. And so Bryce, congratulations and thank you so much for, for your efforts. Um, the, the other thing I was visiting with uh, a friend of ours uh, and it, it was communicated to me that Bryce and others were uh, responsible for starting this notion of a Latino collection. And so it'll give me an opportunity to talk to you about a very, very special pro project, a project that's very dear to me. And when I see all of you here gathered for this wonderful literary program, it uh, gets me even more excited of getting this project accomplished. We're creating a Latino collection. Well, the Latino collection already exists. We're creating a very special place for the Latino collection. It's currently on the sixth floor. We would like to bring it down to the first floor, and we are in the process of raising funds to transform the space that was formerly occupied by the teen library. We're going to create a very special space that will uh, allow for these types of programs, so we can host these, these types of programs, uh, to have authors and literary champions like Carmen and, and others, uh, like Tafoya and others, to inspire youth, to inspire emerging uh, writers, uh, to provide spaces for 
uh, scholars in residence for researchers to be able to access the Latino collection and be inspired by the Latino collection. And it will also have a space for gallery. And so we're very excited that we are, with the help of the Library Foundation and supporters like you, that we will be creating this space so that we can have uh, not only a Latino collection, but that it has a very special home as well. So tonight we're here to celebrate the power of poetry. Uh, poetry tells the stories of our shared past, the, the wonder of our present, and the unknown of our future. Um, poetry inspires and empowers. Poetry can transform communities and change lives. Uh, programs like tonight's event serve as a reminder of the importance of cultivating creativity and inspiration in the community. As I mentioned before, this event has been a collaboration of many, but primarily two individuals. And one of those, of course, is the head of Gemini Inc. And it's my pleasure to invite to the podium Sheila Black. She's also an author and a poet. Thank you, Ramiro. Thank you. And I feel as if I'm going to hide behind the podium because I'm a lot shorter than anyone else in the room. It's my great honor tonight um, to be here, first of all, but secondly, H-E-B in the person, I actually wrote Charles Butt a letter. Every year, Gemini Inc. produces a fine, rare, a, a fine chapbook made of handmade paper. I can hear it. Is this better? Yeah. Yeah. I could almost speak without it, honestly. Um, we, every year, we honor a literary figure of San Antonio. Some of our past honorees have been um, John Philip Santos, Carmen Tafoya, Nan Cuba, um, Abraham Verhesse, and others who have lived and worked in San Antonio. And we make a handmade limited edition chapbook that's done with a letter press, and it's very hand sewn all on, and very rare. And it's my great honor tonight, and I didn't even bring the whole collection because I was worried I'd destroy some of the bigger ones carrying them over here, to present that entire collection to the San Antonio Public Library. And this contribution was funded through the generosity of Charles Butt and HEB. And we're really delighted. And also, it, it doesn't end. Every year, we do a new book. And every year from here on out, we give you a copy. Yay. Now, I am especially delighted tonight, while trying not to get too close to this microphone, to be celebrating our Texas Poet Laureate, Carmen Tafoya. Um, I've known Carmen ever since the second week I came here three and a half years ago. And I thought then San Antonio was the luckiest city in the country to have a poet laureate like Carmen. And now I think Texas, which has not always been fortunate in its elected officials, <laughs> is the luckiest state in the union to have somebody as passionate, as open-hearted, as, as generous, and as utterly convinced of the power of the imagination to transform our lives as my friend and everyone's friend who meets her, Dr. Carmen Tafoya. So I am going to introduce her to the stage right now to begin the program. Um, and we're going to open with a video tribute um, of one of her, my favorite of Carmen's poems, Survival Instructions. But first she's going to tell you a few words about her signature project as Poet Laureate called, and this is such a great title, Planting Poet Trees. Whoa. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you all, community. I'd say the community of San Antonio, but actually we have people here from Laredo and from some of the other regions. So uh, thank you all for being here, and thank you for being such a beautiful community. From San Marcos, uh, Austin, um, you are the heart of this state, and I think this state right now is the heart of this nation. They used to say, um, 
where Texas goes, so goes the nation, but now they're saying where San Antonio goes, so goes Texas. So that puts us all right at the heart of something very important that's happening. I'm very pleased to be a little part of that. Um, the state poet laureate position is not not always as much fun as the city poet laureate position. <laughs> Don't tell them, those guys in the legislature, but um, the city really comes together as a community and they, they, they really celebrated the, the poetic arts in a very cohesive way. But the state poet laureate position is one that is up to the poet laureate. You know, come to the Senate and the House of Representatives and we recognize you and put a little crown of laurels on your head or whatever give you a little declaration and bye, good luck. We'll see the next one, you know, the next round in two years. Don't bug us till, you know, we'll bug you. Um, and uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was use that State Poet Laureate position as a platform to bring poetry to the schools that would not be able to bring poets in. There are some schools that have tons of money. There's a few of them. And there's some universities that have a ton of money that can bring in a Poet Laureate any time they want to. But there are some schools that never get that opportunity. They're struggling too hard to pay their teachers and to buy some books for their library. And I wanted to reach those schools. So I talked to my dean at UTSA in the College of Education, Dr. Betty Merchant. And she supported it. She not only gave me the permission to stop teaching college classes for a year so I could go teach at public schools, but she also dug into her education budget to provide some monies to help the travel expenses to get to different parts of the state. Uh, HEB gave $2,000. We had individual poets, Teresa Palomo Acosta, who said, I can give you 500 bucks if you take it like 200 here and 200 there and 100 in the last one. And um, so that we could buy poetry books for libraries, so that we could go to schools and present uh, poetry uh, to children throughout the state. And we've had the first round of schools selected. The second round is until November 21st. So if you're interested, to November 21st, midnight, midnight, you can go on um, Facebook under, uh, I think it's under Tavoya Poet Trees, because planting was too long to get into that title. Um, but in the first round, we selected seven schools. Four of those schools are from San Antonio, and I know that at least two of them are here tonight. I'm gonna to start with the ones I don't know if they're here, and that is uh, Roosevelt High School. Mm -hmm. Anybody here from Roosevelt? Stand up and cheer. Uh, and uh, Cameron, oh no, do we have Cameron Elementary in the house? No. The two schools that we know that are here tonight are Hausman Elementary. Stand up, Hausman. Wave at us. There they are. And Hillcrest Elementary. Stand and be recognized. These people care enough about their school to want their kids to have a poet come in and work with them and help them develop their own poetry and submit their poetry to a statewide anthology of work. So I'm just very, very uh, proud and grateful to uh, all of you, and I encourage you, if you know people in other parts of the state that would like to have a poet laureate come uh, to their school, tell them to get on and make an application. It's quick and it's short. Thank you. And now we're ready for the video tribute survival instructions. And this is a medley of dramatic presentations by NowCast. Let's enjoy it. And if I knew how to press the button, I would. <laughs> Thank you. 
pronounced it. It's been happening all my life. All the way through school, we have all the teachers speaking English and all the teachers speaking Spanish. And we were kind of used to them mispronouncing the names. But what I look at, Maria Guadalupe, she got called Mary Gudla. And it's as simple as I know. They say, Jamie. Then there was Jesus. Jesus? We have to change that. How about Jesse? And they thought, ah, oh, the teachers here are smarter. The kids that come from all different backgrounds are going to have to be a little more respectful of us, you know? They're going to have to pronounce our names right. They're going to work at it, you know? But they didn't work out the way. The teacher went down to us and she said, Sandra Smith, George Taft, Carmen Tafolo, is that how you pronounce your name? Amen. It's Tafoya. Okay, so I'd come back to class the next day, and she'd say, Sandra Smith, George Taft, Carmen Tafoyo, is that how you pronounce your name? No, ma'am, it's Tafoya. Okay, I'd come back the next day, and she'd say, Sandra Smith, George Taft, Carmen Tafioli, is that how you pronounce your name? No, ma'am, it's Tafoya. Okay, so one day she catches me out in the hall and she says, Now, how do you pronounce your name? He said, Da, Bo, Ya. The double L in Spanish is pronounced like a Y. And she said, Oh, I get it. Like tortilla and mantilla. And I said, Yes. And I came to class the next day. I was so excited. She went down the list. Sandra Smith, George Taft, Carmen Tortilla. <laughs> she was making a little progress. I'm a writer today. I sneaked the word Tortilla into at least two of my book titles. And when you look up Carmen Tortilla on the internet, you find me. <laughs> And I look back on it now and realize that we had an incredible wealth of experience. Um, it was always hard for me growing up to identify with the images that we had externally of what a barrio was supposed to be because I didn't feel deprived, I didn't feel it was a slum, I didn't feel it was a ghetto. I felt it was a, a fiesta full of all kinds of primos and abuelos and tios and tias. Uh, it was uh, a, a life full of cuentos. My early experiences were not that different from anyone else's uh, in the west side of San Antonio, and yet each one of us has a unique experience. Each one of us has something that happened that didn't happen to the person next door. I think about those things. What was it that, that helped me value my culture was it my grandmother and the fact that she loved to tell stories was the fact that my mother um, would always take a pen and, and, and a paper or a pencil whatever she would get and try and write down uh, her, her stories and it, maybe even in letters that she would write her sisters that lived far away she'd try and write them and recapture her own experiences um, was it the fact that my father always told me stories about his mother a grandmother that died when I was one year old, and she would say, Mi mamá siempre decía, uh, No hay sábado sin sol ni domingo sin misa. Dime con quién andas y te diré quién eres. He always had dichos that he said, Mi mamá siempre decía, My mother always said. And so I grew up saying, My grandmother always said, No hay sábado sin sol. And this was a grandmother that died when I was one year old, but I felt I knew her because of the stories that my father told about her. I knew her through him. Okay. We're here at Mission San Jose, one of the five missions that have just been declared World Heritage Sites by UNESCO. This is a very significant moment in San Antonio history. And it's an opportunity for something really wonderful to happen. But it's also a possibility that something less than wonderful will happen. It's very hard for us to move away from a Eurocentric perspective, a perspective that says that all civilization came from Europe. It's very easy for us to praise the Spanish missionaries 
who came to San Antonio and established the Presidio in 1718 and the missions thereafter. It's very easy for us to even say that San Antonio history begins in 1718 with the arrival of the Spanish conquerors or colonials, however you would like to put it. But if we do that, we miss a chance to understand why the missions are here. The Spaniards were not the first residents of San Antonio because the missions were missionizing somebody. And those somebodies have been here for 10 to 12,000 years. It's very important to remember that this is not just an economic opportunity, a chance to develop our missions into money-making ventures but that it's a chance to change the way we look at San Antonio history and world history and to respect the indigenous peoples that were here and that, in San Antonio's instance, still are here. Now we may have the last names Garcia or Lopez, Sanchez or Tafoya, but we represent the direct descendants of the people who built these missions and who built civilizations and settlements here before the arrival of Europeans. It's important in today's world to not disrespect those people who still live here and to wipe out their neighborhoods. We saw this happen once before, right before Hemisphere, in what was called urban renewal, and which in our barrios we began to call Mexican removal. And some of our neighborhoods especially near downtown and in the south side of town, are beginning to feel that they are being wiped away again, chased far out of town because they can't afford to keep living there. The original settlers, the original owners, the original inhabitants of this city, whether you call it San Antonio or whether you call it Yanawan. We can walk right through an American history textbook and poof, we disappear. It's like people don't even notice when we're here at all. You can look through centuries of Latinos being here and people still look at us and say, oh, you're a Latino. Where do you come from? I come from the United States. Yes, but what do you mean like before you cross the border? I didn't cross the border. No, but like before your parents crossed the border. They didn't cross the border. Well, before your grandparents crossed the border. You know, we were Mexicans. We didn't cross the border. The border crossed us. We were here. <laughs> Mexican Americans have at least two different cultural backgrounds. The newcomers were the Spaniards that got here like in the 15th century. The other side of the family was here already. Oh, but that's impossible. The United States didn't even <laughs> exist till 1736. <laughs> And I say, exactly. And the part of my family that was here already, they were like walking all around on this ground before you guys said that Columbus discovered America. We were standing here, we were walking all around on top of the ground, and we didn't even know it was here. We had to wait till somebody from Europe came and told us, it's here. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. I'm so glad you discovered us. We didn't know we were walking around on top of it and didn't even know America was right here below our noses. We didn't know it was here at all. Well, now we know why Carmen's our premier storyteller. And so she's going to come up on stage with a dance by the fabulous Annette Flores. And we will now enjoy a reading of The Story Keeper. Thank you. Um, I'm always flattered and very honored to be able to work with Annette Flores, the granddaughter of El Curro and Teresa Champion, 
one of the families that's influenced our music and our awareness of heritage. And um, there's a beautiful picture of her displayed outside. I, I didn't mention, but one of the things that, um, one of the reasons why I suggested Poetry to the Pueblo as a title was that we wanted to celebrate that poetry can be, can have an impact and, and have all the involvement of the community but it can also have an impact on different artistic genres, on dance, on the music that you will hear from Masul, on film, as you saw, and uh, on theater with our wonderful spoken word uh, performers, and also on the visual arts. And outside there's a display of um, artwork by uh, wonderful, wonderful artists, and all the variety, everything from posters for the bus, uh, illustrations to a book, beautiful oil paintings, and we have some of the artists with us here this evening. Uh, coming all the way from Laredo, Raquel Valle Sentias, would you stand so we can applaud you? She has a, a beautiful series of Chicano writers that I'm dying to, uh, to work with her on developing into a book. Uh, about some of the Chicana writers and, and their work and with this beautiful, uh, uh, these oil paintings that she, in which she has captured a lot of the spirit of the people um, that, that were writing with the Chicana movement and, and beyond. Um, also, we have with us Thelma Ortiz Muraida, my comadre, Thelma, would you stand? Um, we see two of her works out there. One is an illustration from inside the book, Curandera, which has now been banned in Arizona, which means everybody wants to get a hold of it to find out what nasty things are in there. And, and also a poster, the very first poem poster that I did was called Voyage, and that is displayed out there as well. And we have with us David Hernandez from Mexico City. I told you about Laredo, I didn't tell you about Mexico City. And uh, David has two painting, two um, pieces of art out there. Uh, one is a poster to the poem, Allí por la calle San Luis, and the other uh, is the, uh, the poem, po poem postcard that was made for the uh, Via Metropolitan Transit uh, because they wanted uh, it to be, uh, to be read at their board of directors meeting. And so anyway, take some time to look around at the, uh, the photographs of Annette and of Azul and at the paintings and to say hi to the artists and thank them as well. So this poem is called The Story Keeper, Instructions from an Historian. In the jarros, she says, look in the jarros, the ones forgotten or shoved aside with a broken clay lip and color dulled by years of hard use and unmeditated abuse. Search between the folds of rags, the places no one else would look. Often they are there, hiding. Look in the garage, in the dark corners. Sometimes they are undiscovered, silent, in the tecorucho sheds, out back, or dumped in the alley wiped away from our lives for the trash to take. Others hoarded like treasures, the holder fears to reveal, wrapped in a homemade colcha in a wooden box under the bed. In the viejito's eyes, in the twilight of death, you read their secret, the eyes point you to the spot, stamp, remember on the almost forgotten box and plead with you to be the keeper of the story. To open the box, unwrap the colcha carefully, save the scrawled story, protect it as best you can. Look in the places where ink does not show, in the breaking voice between the lines of a song. Our history is written in that song, written on the voice, sometimes written on the heart. Look at the hands, the way the woman crosses herself, 
when she passes a certain field, everyone knows the story of what happened there late that night, 90 years ago. Everyone knows, but it is not written. The paragraphs of dangling bodies were too long, too ugly to be written. The sentences, like unfinished lives, too short to make sense. The letters of the word spelled out, distorted, incomprehensible, like mutilation of body parts that started out in belleza and truth. Look at the way she holds the masa with both hands, protecting, feeling its warmth, memorizing the moment for just a second before it split apart into many tortillas each to go their own way, some consumed rapidly, some wasted, some disappeared, never to be seen again in her gestures, her hesitations, her sigh of mourning, lie our history. Ask the whispers, she whispers, breathed out in unguarded moments when the soul is too tired to think, the body too worn down to hurt more in the numbness of the night when the father wrestles with the unwritten history, pleading to save it, speak it, bury it, staring at the pluma across the room, avoiding the paper, singing the Indian chant of a story he will not tell his children yet. They are too young, only 10 or 16 or 36. Wait, wait, he prays. I fear for them to know what those hate-filled others did to my grandfather. They are too young. Perhaps I, too, at only 60, am too young to know, too old to forget. Ask the whispers. She chants. Learn the chant. Sing it slow and privately like he, a sacred song to be sung at only sacred moments. Look in the footwells of our steps. The table corners rubbed smooth, the marks on the walls where we have lived, the fine and tired stitches in the clothing sewed and mended. The careful fold of the shuck on the tamal, the thumbprint curves of crepe paper flowers trying to make canta out of yores. Learn to read the eyes, the hands, the spine. You must be like a detective or a spy, subtle, unnoticed, unrelenting, for they are out there, our stories, to be read in the tracks of tears now made into wrinkles on the face, in the scars we carry with pride, in the grocery list marked with crayon on a junk mail funeral home advertisement in the Western Union telegrams of money sent home to Mexico, in the eviction notices sent people whose address has stayed the same for 150 years. You must be persistent, courageous, go quickly, urgently, go into the dark corners, unveil our treasures from the attic, go find it, hear it, touch it, write it down. This is how we keep our history. This is how we also Keep our soul. And I'd like to ask Dr. Antonia Castaneda to stand. She is the inspiration for this poem. Antonia, stand and be recognized. One of our early, yes, please stand. One of our early historians. Antonia Castaneda, Dr. Antonia Castaneda, she's the inspiration for this poem. She's the historian who told me our story isn't in the history books. It's in the songs. It's in the people's faces. It's in their lives. Thank you, Antonia. One definition of a poem that I love is that a poem is a message in a bottle, destination, anyone in the world. And I think that poems set to music are especially that way. 
they seem to become the voice under and inside us all. And we're very lucky tonight to have Azul singing songs based on poems by Carmen. And isn't that the perfect name for a great singer, Azul? Welcome. si se oye, creo que sí, sí se oye. Buenas noches, felicidades Carmen por este evento tan bonito y escogí um, when this beautiful challenge was given to me um, I was a little hesitant on um, how to make justice to to these beautiful poems and I decided to to do a couple of, well, two of my favorites. Se llama Me llamo Soledad. Vive 
We're back. I'm here. I'm Carmen Tafoya. I'm Eduardo Garza. That way you don't get the two of us confused. And um, <laughs> we're going to be doing a little composite of three poems in two voices. Sometimes three. Maybe four. Yeah, right. <clears throat> San Antonio, San Antonio this, this is what is, what is ours. ours. As, As we, we walk, walk down town, through, the centuries, through the centuries, through, through el mercado, and feel our heritage seeping up, up through the dirt. dirt. At el mercado, the farmer's market, you Por hear... Cajetes, all ready to be cured with little grains of rice, velvet pictures for your living room, senora. Just look at this magnificent tiger here or here jesus with his crown of thorns or president kennedy he was so good to us mexicanos <laughs> get it for your comadre the ones that so involved in less neighborhood meetings excuse me do you have sombreros those great big ones you know chiles fresh hot and at a good price Chile Pitín, Chile Serranos, Jalapeños, Chile Colorado, all ground up already. Excuse me, are these hot? Ay, it's me. It feels so hot already. It's bugging me. My father used to call these days la canicula. Sí. The dog days. Y la tencha. Why isn't she here today? 
Did, Did she miss her ride? Hijo, what a tragedia. Is that her brother, the one that lives with her? Mm -hmm. He went to the social security office so he could get paid his retirement. And that they can't pay him, they say, because his boss hadn't taken out anything for social security after 40 years. Imaginas? And that his chest is hurting him, but he doesn't want to go to the doctor because he doesn't have the con que, you know, the with what? And, and he's still not 65 for la Medicare. Oh. So he just kept quiet and he took it and he didn't complain no more. No. That guy never complains. Is it far from here to the Alamo? Vaya. And that yesterday, <laughs> when Tencha gets home with that big old mountain of paper flowers in her arms, you know, the ones that she sells and mm -hmm. gringos like so much. Well, I'm getting inside the door, loaded down with everything and not seeing what was there, that she stumbles on the body of her brother I on the floor. Mean. She falls on top of him, con flowers y todo, and the poor guy dead or not. Bueno, que la tencha feels like dying of pena, que why didn't she make him go to the doctor and pay it for him, you know, a little down payments or something, like the layaway at the stores or algo, all feeling bad, poor thing, what a shame, hombre. Yeah, poor tencha. Listen, if you go by her house, bring me the flowers and whatever else she has to sell, and I'll sell them for her here, so the poor thing has for her expenses. Okay, Mano, and, and you know what? The corn and the fruit that I don't sell today, I'll take it to her. After all, que tomorrow's another load. Yeah, tomorrow is another load. Ay, así es la vida. That's life. Sí, así es la vida. That's life. Molcajetes, all ready to be cured with little grains of rice. This is what surrounds you. It surrounds you. It's right here. Aquí. Aquí. Aquí mero. He wanders through the crooked streets that mimic riverbeds from long ago and breathes the anxious air in traffic that's filled with tension left from the quivering bowstrings in woods under attack. She shops the windows happy where the stocking once was good and her kitchen floor is built on bones of venison once gently roasted it's a good place for a party he concurs to his friends now dressed in jeans the ground was already beaten smooth and festive by the joy of ancient dances they feel the warmth and yet don't know their soul is filled with the spirit of Coyote's past. Walking, Walking through, through the, the west side, side breathing, breathing our history, our cultura. This is what feeds your soul, San Antonio. This is what feeds you, what picks your tomates and makes your tacos and feeds your soul. Feeding you, alimentándote, like a mother speaking to her child. Dear mijo, I have slipped chile under your skin, secretly wrapped in each enchilada, hot and soothing, carefully cut into bitefuls for you as a toddler, increasing in power and intensity as you grew until it could burn forever. He metido chile debajo de tu piel, discretamente envuelto en cada enchilada, caliente y calmante, cuidadosamente cortada en mordiditas cuando eres pequeñín, aumentando en poder y potencia según crecías, hasta que pudiera quemar para siempre. Silently spiced into the rice. Soaked into the bean, caldo, smoothed into the avocado. I have slipped chile under your skin. Drop, my fiery drop, until it ignited the sun altar fire in your blood. Like a prayer, silenciosamente yo viznado en el arroz, enjuagado en el caldo de frijol, emparejado en el aguacate, yo he metido chile debajo de tu piel gota por fugosa gota hasta que encendiera 
el fuego altar de sol en tus venas. I have squeezed cilantro into the breast milk. He exprimido el cilantro dentro de la leche de pecho. Made sure you were nurtured with the clean taste of corn stalks. Para asegurar que te nutrieras con el sabor limpio de maíz verde. With the wildness of thick leaves. Con lo salvaje de hojas espesas. Of untamed monte. De monte no de mes domesticada of unscheduled growth de crecimiento no planeado I have ground the earth of these Americas in my molcajete until it became a fine and piquant spice sprinkled it surely into each spoonful of food that would have to expand to fit your soul he molido la tierra de estas Américas en mi molcajete hasta que se convirtiera en especia fina y picante lo que he rociado libremente en cada cucharada de tu comida que tuviera que expandir para venirle a tu alma. Dear mijo, dear mijo, dear mija, dear, mija, dear, dear corn, corn, chile, chile cilantro, cilantro, mijitos, this is your herencia. Esto es tu herencia. This is what is yours. Esto es lo que es tuyo. This is what your mother fed you to keep you alive. Esto es lo que te dio tu madre para que pudiera sobrevivir. To, to keep, keep you alive. alive. To, to keep, keep you alive. alive. Para que pudieras sobrevivir. The stories of this city and the voices of this city are many and fabulous and each distinct. And it's my great honor right now to be introducing the section in which, thanks to Carmen, we'll get to hear a good many of them. So please, come on up to the stage and a big hand for Amanda Flores, National Grand Slam Poetry Champion, <laughs> dedicated Gemini Inc. instructor, and just a fabulous poet. Thank you, thank you, Carmen. There you are. Thank you, Carmen. Such a pleasure. Always a pleasure. The poem I'm sharing today is a, a poem by Anthony Flores, um, but I do write my own poems, so if you'd like to, to hear those, you can check out amandathepoet.com or buy one of the CDs outside. If you like this poem enough, uh, you can also hear it on the CD over yonder in the foyer. <laughs> this is a poem about Manu Ginobili. It's called Manu Ginobili. <laughs> Manu Ginobili is a thief. He'll strip you at center court down to your Adam in the garden crotch leaf. Just leave you hanging there, so to speak. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's on a ragged, jagged, zigzag roller coaster ride to the other side with his all the way to the hoop. Hocus pocus. Now you see me, now you don't. Think you'll stop me? Betcha won't. <laughs> this is Raging Bull and Ali in melody. This is machinery meets poetry. The surge of skin and bone dissecting defenses with precision surgery. Here's the incision of cutting vision, the no-look cross-court assist or that twist that'll knock you on your ass because there's both English and Spanish on that spinning pass. This is rock and roll meets Argentine tango on the highlight show. Super G2O in the flow, off the give and go. And don't you know you're too slow, so gonna blow right past you. No te enojes just cause I got the corazón and the cojones to outlast you. <laughs> He'll have you off your seat and on your feet and so prepare the we, the G, the wow. 
all the damn the woe. But don't forget that he plays D just as tenaciously as O. He's the brick wall that moves with you and no matter how fast or large, just when you think you've gotten through, abracadabra, poof, out of thin air, he's there to take the charge. And so you've got to give him credit, don't you see? Cause Manu Ginobili is just like Visa. He's everywhere you want to be. He's your ball and chain, the hunger of will that feeds on fear and pain and the shadow that you can't outrun despite the absence of the sun. He's a thief, as I said, and he'll steal your dreams away cause no one comes any harder when the clock says it's time to play. It's Manu's day. And here's the way your nights descend to mark the end. With time running out, the ball in his hands to finish, the buzzer beating past to Timmy on the no-look dish, the fade to black cause your hopes have just faded, step back, fade away, thrish, or better yet the magic move you can't forget, the crossover fake into the paint, think I'm going that way, but I ain't, I'm taking flight to boom the rim and rend your heart asunder, and yes, that was lightning you just saw flash behind your closed eyes, LeBron James, in case you were starting to wonder, cause Manu Ginobili just threw down another left-handed dunk and you've just been kissed by thunder. Thank you. I think we're rocking the house. My next poet was recently called on by the U.S. Air Force to come share her fabulous words in Abu Dhabi. Now she's back with us in San Antonio, Andrea Vocab Sanderson. Hi, sweetie. Knowing, thinking there has got to be more But eventually takes too long to get to Five steps from too far away And I personally have no patience waiting on that destination But you say that there is a predetermination factor And you say that life is a stage And that we are all actors Well, damn I must have forgotten my lines or left my script behind in my mama's womb because my vision looks blurry but I can see the writing on the stone of my tomb and I don't want to be doomed here in the limbo of complacency blatantly out of place deliberately keeping a monotonous pace inadvertently going to waste or paste into the monetary codependency of the next check like my boy Justin once told me living my life in retrospect I want to learn protect my best assets, but always bid high when I bet. Set my eyes on the prize and rise like the opposite of sunsets. Look back having no regret. Consolidate my pain like debt so I can hone all of my energy into overcoming. Select my weak 
weaknesses to be my strengths and always represent what you see in the fine print because I've spent too many times trying to turn nickels and dimes into dollars, but I was always just making sense. So now I'm trying to maximize my day minutes in life like I was calling my friends and family members Sprint to Sprint or T-Mobile. Because you see, this life's journey is long distance and walking briskly is too risky. I've got to set my feet to move faster because there is so much in life that I am after. I'm looking for that technicolor finish line with the pot of gold, but I don't want to end this chapter the way it begun. So though I am young, I succumb to my sentences and songs. Write on, then stay up all night, memorizing my rhyme. Hit the road, then call in, stick to my job, burden up all my vacation, holiday, personal leave, and sick time. <laughs> I know my day is coming, but I'm still waiting in line. Hoping that my card won't be declined. I never expected to have anything handed to me so I will earn mine. Because on the road to success, there's no such thing as exit signs. And I'm only defined by my limitations. I will not accept any imitation. The key to stand ahead in this poetry game is all about innovation. So yeah, I'll accept any invitation to fill the open slot. And if the slam is full, that's cool. I just rock the open mic spot. <laughs> my talent and my passion is all I've got. And when I step off stage, I accept cash, personal check. <laughs> <laughs> but if not, tell me that my words touched your soul. Because that statement is worth more than you will ever know. Worth its own personal weight and goal. Answer to the question that I posed about three, four minutes ago. We as poets profit from the value of our words. May yours and yours and yours hold virtue. Our next poet, one of the masters of making you feel like you're on a smooth stroll through a crowded neighborhood, about to eat some delicious pan dulce. Jesse Cardona, wonderful poet and teacher. Please come on up. Good evening. I remember riding my fenderless bike to La Panateria del Pueblo. Sometimes I would go alone. Sometimes I would dream. I took Abuelo by the hand. I remember Pan Dulce tasting even sweeter after confessing my sins at St. Joseph's Catholic Church. <laughs> Nothing like dulcified bread for crucified bones. And I remember standing in front of the glass displays, telling El Panadero, I'll take one of these and one of those and one of these. Unlike the cool Pachuco who came in asking for pan de polvo, un regalo, y un hueso azucarado. I had not mastered the names of Pan Dulce. So imagine the thrill. Imagine the authority in my chavalon bones when I returned asking for those huesos azucarados to go. <laughs> yes, I remember Pan Dulce. La Virgen de Guadalupe bordered by blue neon lights and how the smell of canela reminded me of Abuelito's peloncillo skin. And no, I don't live on Avocado Avenue and I've never been in the vicinity of trees but I must confess de vez en cuando I would rather be un vagabundo hawking velvet avocados por los barrios de Aslantejas, USA 
Yes, I must confess, I am an avocado aficionado. I will vouch for any avocado. You see, avocados are not vociferous. They are content to be philosophical with window sills. Visualize two avocados, two summer syllables ripening on a windowsill, and you visualize world peace. Pass, pass, pass. You see, avocados or not equivocados. <laughs> they are not into hate. Do not equivocate. Avocates are not into voodoo economics. They just want a place on your Mexican plate. But what must avocates think? Mexican food is chic. It's made the New York celebrity list. It's Gucci bags next to guacamole bowls. <laughs> Meanwhile, there are no revolutions on Guadalupe Street. Only the blooming rose bushes by Rudy's transmission. Thank you. Thank you. My next poet really needs no introduction because his name says it all. Anthony the Poet. All right, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Um, I have a six-year-old kid and I work, have been working with uh, youngsters for many, many years, so a lot of my poetry sounds like nonsense because we just try to have fun. That's where this one started. I almost threw it away because I thought it was so crazy. I had like 10 Lone Star beers when I was writing it and I thought it was great. And then I was like, no, it ended up in the trash. But uh, I'm glad I pulled it out. Um, I, I normally don't write love poems, but when I do, they're about huevos rancheros. <laughs> I tell the waitress and all the meseros, please bring me an order of huevos rancheros con jalapenos or habaneros. Just make them picosos, mis huevos rancheros. I sit at the table con mis abuelos. All of my ancestors eat huevos rancheros. Not just the raza, you don't need sombreros. Even the north side loves huevos rancheros. A todos les gustan, including you hueros, who can resist them, are huevos rancheros. Parker, Ginobili y Duncan, los tres veros meros, todos los spurs eat huevos rancheros. Don't eat too many, you might get the pedos of burning the city with huevos rancheros. The breakfast of champions, de los guerreros, don't eat the Wheaties, try huevos rancheros. You sit like a baby. Making pucheros whenever they run out of huevos rancheros. The cook has a beard, don't put in no pelos. I don't like no hair in my huevos rancheros. The clock says it's too late, don't be in busteros. Just break them and make them, mis huevos rancheros. If you get the ojo, don't need curanderos. Just rub your own forehead with huevos <laughs> I sent out a love note con mis mensajeros. Baby, I love you, make me huevos rancheros. Don't get them at Exxon or at the Valeros, but I think the picnic has huevos rancheros. Don't get me no sweet bread at the Panaderos. I'm in the mood for some huevos rancheros. The yolks look so pretty, but only enteros. Don't ask for them scrambled. Those are not huevos rancheros. <laughs> Palabras antiguas en los cancioneros. Siempre que vivan are huevos rancheros. I lick the plate clean. 
Nothing left for the perros. Don't ask me for none of my huevos, rancheros. <laughs> Now, it's my great honor to announce a tremendous reunion. The Women of Ill Repute was a legendary early San Antonio spoken word collective. It was founded in 1999 by Amalia Ortiz, and tonight we have original members Francis Santos, Victoria Zapata Klein, and Lisa Cortez Walden. And I am so excited to see them. We uh, normally perform as a group, but a lot of our members are out, and so um, we decided that we would uh, pay our tributes to Godwin uh, with our individual voices that are threaded by our love for her and San Antonio. This is a poem called Mercado, uh, about the San Antonio Mercado uh, that was uh, once a real mercado with fruit and vegetables and then they took it apart and then they made it a fake mercado and it, that's perfect sense. Um, my grandmother used to shop there uh, she still has, the, we still have the family house on Camarón and uh, right there in front of the creek uh, by Five Points, a uh, big old house on stilts. Today, Mama and I drive downtown past pecan trees making whisper sounds, take the dusty rose Cadillac park far in the back of Calle Pecos La Trinidad by El Mercado, y en esta día estamos comprando. And the year is 1961, when wooden boots and stands carried eggs and sweet pan, leche quemada and caramel flan. Other stands carried metates, molcajetes, and cast iron skillet pans. Mama would take out her thick cotton sack and move right along with her plan of attack. Onions, olive oil, salt, cilantro, potatoes, peppercorns, garlic, comino. She'd haggle with Mr. Peña, the produce vendor. I'll give you a dollar for all the ones bruised. And he'd look at her, half insulted, half amused. And he'd tell her, Senora, claro que sí. You do me good business by taking this junk from me. And then they'd wink at the inside joke. And I'd wonder what next mama would provoke. Because next we'd buy fruit some soft and some firm, the sweetest, most luscious she would discern, like the anthropologist searching for sacred bones, like the geologist searching for lost stones. Mama would scavenge that wooden fruit stand until she held the perfect aguacate in her soft and strong hand. Eso, she'd say. You know, but it's a little bruised. And then the fruit vendor, half insulted, half amused, would give a small break on already the cost, and my ma counted every small victory not lost. And finally, on top of that thick cotton sack, on to the dulces, the booths, toward the back, and my ma allowed me to pick sweets from the stand. Oh, I chose some pineapple, some sweet potato, and ya, yeah, bastante! She'd yell without shame, porque ya estás gorda, and your father's to blame. But I didn't worry, because at home I would find that she'd snuck in some extra. She had it there all the time. And now our day is done at the market of the sun, driving home at 15 miles per hour in 1961. <laughs> Driving back down to our little house downtown, back toward the pecan trees that make the whisper sounds. Mama, me, and the thick cotton sack, us, low and slow, in a rose Cadillac. Hi, 
I'm really honored to be up here with uh, sharing the stage with all these wonderful poets. This one is uh, simply an ode to Garmin. You are sonnets and salsa. You are the turquoise rebosos that brighten your eyes, wise as missionary nuns, yet wild with the light of children at play. You continue to teach, con orgullo y gusto. You don't stop, you don't quit. For that alone, you should be honored. But today we celebrate that as a city, San Antonio chose to honor you as our poet laureate, our inaugural poet laureate. You are the poet of the pueblo. We celebrate you as you celebrate us with this river here. Even while your body fights cancer, you continue to work more and more as the days go by. You travel to Paris, France, and just about every town in Texas performing, presenting poetry. You don't stop, you don't quit. Even through all the challenges you face as a daughter, as a mother, as a wife, through all the strife, you persevere, you remain the people's poet. Now you are the Texas State Poet Laureate. You don't stop, you don't quit. You continue to share your words, your energia, like a curandera, healing throughout hills, valleys, plains. You inspire all. Carmen, you are the chili peppers, serrano y chile pequins, feeding our hunger. Carmen, you are the blue, the green of our San Antonio's river, soothing our souls. Carmen, you are the dazzling yellow of the esperanzas, the scarlet crepe myrtles, flowers that flourish, even with nominal life-sustaining water. Carmen, you are the pride of San Antonio, and we love you. posted on Facebook that I don't usually read my poetry because I don't really think of myself as a poet, but uh, Carmen always encourages people so much to read their poet, to, po to read their poetry and to think of themselves in terms of poet, in terms of poets. So thank you, Carmen, so much. Most holy poet Saint Carmen La Santa Rubia, faithful muse, you do not seek our devotion, but come on. We all know you're the patron saint of obstinate poems and the overworked poets who cannot ignore them. <laughs> Pray for me, Santa Rubia, that I may receive your vision in my time of need, my deadline. <laughs> Get this poem sitting in my belly out of me. These words sit like rocks in my gut. They are the fruit of fear. They are the 500 years of mis ancestros whispering, Ay, migra, hay que sobrevivir, no? Santa Rubia, these fears eat me from the inside and my body can no longer host them. I must set them free, turn their acrid taste to phrases of love for humanity. And so I petition your intercession. Help me form these rocky ruminations into diamonds. Give me bravery to dig the darkest caverns where they hide, strength to move meters and form feet that walk in brilliance. Bring me clarity of metaphor, the power of rhyme, Keep my memory in truth and not nostalgia. Ay, Santa Rubia, te pido, te pido, te pido. Let my words be indígena, Chicana, Palestinian, Jew, Syrian, Filipina, Kenyan, Ugandan, Chinese, Scottish, Italian, or look at the Let 
them travel through my body so that they remember me wholly, my scent, my disappointment, my sex, my joys, my exes, my fears. Let them use my identities for my communities who need them. Let these words that I will free bring them energy. Let them bring pride to our old and hope to our young. And should you choose to honor this petition, I vow to attend five, no, 10 poetry readings. <laughs> not performances, straight up poetry readings. <laughs> and not thinking in the back of my head that they really pulled that one on their breath pocket or that it's totally derivative or maybe irrelevant or maybe not. In all things metaphorical, I pray to you, amen. <laughs> Special last poet who's going to come up here. She's never read a poem out loud in public before. It's in Spanish. Her name is Christina, and she wanted to read a poem for Carmen. Come on up, Christina. <laughs> My poem is called Que es Poesía. <clears throat> que es Poesía mientras tú clavas mis, tus pupilas en mis pupilas. ¿Qué es poesía? Cuando te digo poesía, eres tú. Now we have a reception outside. There's a couple of things I want to tell you about it. One, there's great food, there's great art. Last but not least, at Carmen's special request, there's a wall, and there's magic markers, and there's post-its, and it's our poetry wall. And we would all be honored, us poets, if you would all write one beautiful word, one beautiful line, something in your hearts to share with us. And before we do that, I have a personal request. Can we all stand up and just give Carmen a huge round of applause? She has been... community. We have been so lucky as a city and a state to have somebody with the capacity to not only express that in her work, but also to really communicate it, as our last poetry reader said. She's our real saint of poetry, so yay, Carmen! <laughs> she's going to close this down, because I think she should. I don't know what I can say. I mean, all of these wonderful performers, everything from the Huevos Rancheros to the, I, I mean, y'all have been fantastic. Azul, those were amazing songs. Gente, niña, con tu poesía linda, preciosa, articulada. Eh, niña, tú tienes un talento magnífico de poder no simplemente apreciar la poesía, pero para también presentarlo en público. I just am very, very fortunate to be part of this pueblo. I invite this pueblo to go out there, put whatever inspires you on a piece of paper and post it, note it, they're post-its, right? And post it, note it wherever you think it goes and somebody else may come around and rearrange it and we're gonna have a poem that's created by this entire city and by this entire beautiful community Go out there and listen to the poetry that's in your own hearts. It doesn't always have to sound fancy. It doesn't always have to have Shakespearean words. But it has to reflect your life, your emotions, and validate you as important. You are the ones that are the poetry of this world. Thank you very much.